I'm violinist Vadim Glusman. I'm pianist Janice Carissa. And we're about to play for you definitely one of the grandest piano and violin sonatas, as uh, Beethoven himself has called it, uh, the C minor number seven. Uh, for me, the, the, the uh, key question in, in, in this music is scope. Mm. of emotion. Uh, you go from, from high drama to humor, uh, and he opposes them immediately next to each other, especially in the fourth movement when he comes back to C minor, mm. these moments when we go from almost Mozartian yeah. uh, effervescent uh, expression back to this incredible intensity. intensity. Yeah. Uh, how, how does it feel ruling it through, from the keyboard? <laughs> Well, first of all, it's he's so dramatic on the key and on the writing and in the music. I mean, it starts with this really incredible, very distant C minor chord that is outlined by the by the keyboard. And then suddenly, next thing you know, he, of course, does that whole crescendo to the limit. And then suddenly he pulls back. And that was so dramatic. And then, of course, when the violin comes in, I'm like becoming that storm that is like rumbling from like miles and miles away, but then you can see it coming. And of course, in a way, it's kind of like a foreshadowing of like what a journey the whole piece will be and how there's so much drama, pain, but then there's also beauty. But then you only arrive to that beauty after going through all of that struggle that he puts you through in the beginning. And of course, by the beauty, I'm talking about that beautiful second movement. The second movement is up, really absolutely stunning. amazing. Yeah.
I'm about to play a piece that is very dear to my heart, uh, Tfilah, Prayer, by Lera Auerbach. Uh, when dreaming about this program, I, I already knew how special this series are, and I really wanted to bring something that is at most meaningful to me, and this piece certainly is. Um, this was the first piece ever written for me and dedicated to me. I, I was uh, probably Janice's age at that time, uh, across the street here in Juilliard. And um, Lera brought this manuscript and saying, here, this is for you. And see, it's dedicated to you. Uh, of course, this was overwhelming, and I've been playing this this music ever since. It's been now almost almost thirty years. Uh, I do think it's a masterwork. Uh, the The music is, in a way, uh, Lera's reaction to to the tragedy of Holocaust. But as any music, it it resembles something within each and every one of us. Uh, it will speak to us, to everyone, in a, in a very different way. Uh, and I, I thought that this is a very personal piece for me, and I wanted to share it with the Vanguard audience. I, I couldn't find more appropriate work. And um, when I play this music, uh, I always have in front of me that very manuscript that I got from, from Lera 30 years ago. And of course, there is now a printed edition of it. And many, many people, many of my colleagues have played it, but I still use this old manuscript. I can't, can't separate from it.
Well, we're about to play for you a, a piece that I think holds the Guinness Book of Records amount of transcriptions. Bartok Romanian dances. They were conceived as a piano solo piece. Uh, and there is every imaginable transcription in, in existence from full symphony orchestra to a version for piano and tuba. I personally have heard it. it it's, it's quite special. Uh, now, this transcription was done by uh, a great Hungarian violinist, Zoltan Shakai, with Bartek's blessing. Uh, they were close friends and associates. So this is as good as the original. And of course, we violinists think it is better. Uh, and again, this is a piece that I've been playing for many, many, many years. And it's interesting how, how a, a great work uh, never makes you tired. Uh, as long as I'm capable, I will, I will play it with, gra with great joy. And also incredible spontaneous energy, which I find so incredible. Every time we play this, it's never the same. There's always a great surprise that is just like hiding in between the bars and the movement when we run through. So I always look forward to running it through.
I began playing violin f exactly 40 years ago. I just realized it's, it's been 40 years. Uh, it was in uh, Latvia, in the uh, Riga, the capital. Uh, it has a wonderful tradition of uh, musical upbringing. Uh, many extraordinary musicians have come fr fr from Riga and I'm, I'm very honored to be continuing that lineage. Um, I studied there for my first uh, eight years uh, and then somehow I moved and, and studied in, in many different places from uh, Siberia to my new home in, in Israel, on to Dallas and then here in New York. Um, so I started when I was five years old. I was actually taught by my pianist mother. She was self-taught and growing up, we had a pretty musical family. My mom plays the piano, my brother plays the, played the piano, I play the piano, and my dad knew how to play the piano a little bit. So growing up, of course, when you're a kid who's just so full of curiosity, you can't help but kind of just like want to touch everything you see, and that includes the piano. So that's how I started, and then when I was 14, 15, I moved to Philadelphia to go to Curtis, and that's where I'm currently studying at. And through there, I got all of these amazing opportunities that allowed me to meet Vadim. So that's my story. Well, this is our, I think, fifth day. Yeah, very, very recent. We actually never played just the two of us until recently, so. Yeah, uh, Janice uh, came to my festival in, in, in Chicago, to the North Shore Chamber Music Festival, as a young artist, as a winner of our um, Akari Form Scholarship Fund. And uh, she became a member of the family right away. And uh, when the question arose of me coming to, to Vanguard, I thought it would be very beautiful and meaningful to introduce the next generation. So here we are. <laughs> 